Next, we're going to move south to Cameron County. Javier Mendez with the Cameron County. Uh oh, did I lose it? No, I did it. Cameron County been there for 20 years, and he's 10 years in his current position as park director. Javier. Thank you, John. Morning. Um, got several pictures here to um, show you all. And uh, like everybody, we have several challenges. Um, and there's different methods that we use to, to um, clean, up, clean up our beaches. Um, we, uh, as far as the park system, we have probably about um, 13 miles of beach that we maintain, of course, and there's Boca Chica, which uh, Cameron County Public Works maintains, and they, they rake and they, they uh, pick up the seaweed and trash and everything else, but it's not as frequent as we do on, on South Padre Island. Um, and when I refer to South Padre Island, it's, it's the unincorporated areas of the, of, of the island. Um, the town has their own maintenance uh, plan, um, but um, like I said, there's several uh, uh, challenges that we have, and like everybody else, you know, we have concessionaires, we have businesses um, um, that are in the park, um, and then we have, you know, people, groups, uh, individuals that are that are uh, concerned of how we maintain um, our beaches. So it's it's a balanced act that you got to you got to play in, in uh, it's a difficult role. Um, this is <clears throat> one method that we use. Of course, it's a um, tractor and beach rake, like like everybody or some of the entities use. Um, and we do rake our beaches um, every day. Um, I had some text on the, up there, but I guess it, it it's not coming out. But anyway. What we do is we rake our beaches every day, <clears throat> especially in Isla Blanca Park, um, and we try to get up to the north end and try to rake up there where we have vehicle, uh, vehicular access, uh, which is beach access uh, five on up. And <clears throat> what we do is we have, uh, you know, out of the, the, the 13 miles that we have, is there's more linear footage of beach that's in our jurisdiction. We just don't go that far and maintain. Um, what we do is we <clears throat> rake up the, uh, the sargasm as close as we can to the dunes, and then what we do is we turn around and with the bucket we'll push it up closer to uh, the dune, uh, the, the front dune, and, and I guess uh, front stacking like everybody refers to. Um, <clears throat> when it gets real heavy, of course, we use um, that front end loader or we use a maintainer, and what we do is we try to windrow that that uh, and try to pile it up as much as possible and then push up um, that uh, the piles up along that uh, uh, front of dune area and I'll show you some pictures later on where where we've we've done this just because of maintenance um, but you can see where the dunes have already taken off and, and naturally you know we don't go out there and irrigate and I was going to ask David earlier if he had an irrigation plan in place or where they have to irrigate or if it's just naturally but with us, it's just you know natural. Uh, of course, we have we've been in a drought, so we haven't had very much rain. But it's it's taken off and it's it's uh, seems to become stable. Uh, there's another picture. Um, there's another one, and <clears throat> right there, of course, we pick up a lot of sand uh, with that seaweed. And uh, again, over there on the edge, let's see. Okay, so over there where the, where the people are standing there, you can see the row where we've gone in there either with the front end loader or with the maintainer, and we're trying to push it and trying to, to, to uh, uh, put it together where it's more manageable. There's another picture. And like you know, everybody's talking about is, is uh, you know, you go out there, you, you clean it up and, you know, an hour or two, it's the same way. Um, there's a picture where we we've, we've stacked up that um, sargasm up to the uh, to the dunes. There's another picture. Seems like some of the text is off the. There's another picture. And I think somebody had mentioned, um, you know, this is not the best method because 
of, you know, you pile it up on top of the vegetation that may kill it or, um, and then you unstable that dune that's, that's already, you know, been stabilized with, with vegetation. Um, there's our loader again. And I like the method that, that, um, that you all have come up with or the concept as far as um, mid stacking and, and rear stacking. That's, you know, something that we probably want to look into. Um, of course, all this property up here uh, that I'm showing uh, pictures of is private property, so. It's a large pile. There's some with um, a lot of sand. And I don't know where that's at, but I had that in my, uh, my pictures. Um, this here, this is what I was referring to earlier, <clears throat> where we stacked up, and, and a lot of this is old um, mounds, and I guess it's in, the, in the rules it's called it Copus Mound, but um, all these are old stacks of what we've, what we've uh, pushed seaweed up there before, and, and you can see where they've taken off. And of course, this is all private property. And I think this is um, also what we refer to as a washout area. And you all refer to logs and stuff that we pick up, uh, or they, you know, they pick up off the beach that washes ashore. That's um, we push that up also just to make it uh, safer for the vehicles. There's one of my employees to show you how how high he's probably about. Well, I guess he's like five six or so. He's a short short employee. But anyway, he's uh, yeah, that just shows you where we pot up. Now this is at Isla Blanca Park. Um, this is on the south end of the island. What we do here is just a little bit different than what we do in the north end because we're restricted as far as how much land we got to stockpile um, the seaweed. So what we do is we stockpile it and then we go back after it's dried up and we push it back onto the beach. Um, and I'll show you an aerial photograph where it'll show where there's been a lot of vegetation um, established and um, has grown up. Um, that's that same same area where we we're starting to push it back onto the beach. There's another one that um, at El Cisa Blanca Park where we just piled it up. Um, this is, I guess, going back to the north end of the island. <clears throat> videos of where we pushed that uh, and piled up the, uh, the the sargasm. And what we do is we don't put it, you know, all in one continuous line. We kind of, you know, put it sporadically. Um, and of course for the sea turtles and so on um, and maybe they would you know come together eventually and, uh, and build up. Um, I believe that's one of our employees showing the seaweed um, what's, what's been either eroded or, or what's been on, uh, laid on top. And that um, a friend of mine sent me that that's I guess that's a, a sargasm fish. Pretty interesting. Um, there's another area where we piled up um, sargasm. And I think this, I'm not sure if you can see here, you know, there's a lot of sticks and stuff. I believe that was from, from Hurricane um, Katrina and Rita. Um, we had a lot of debris that washed ashore. Uh, up on the north end of the island, we had to break up all that and, and push it up um, because it was just so so concentrated up there in the north end. Now this is <clears throat> this is a video, and, and the gentleman who took these video these uh, aerials, he shows 2006, but I don't think it's 2006 because we show a, a building there that's since I've been there for 10 years, it's been gone. But on that aerial, it shows it's it's there. So it wasn't 2006, but you can see right here. I'll show you real quick. Here, right here is where um, where the vegetation is, and over here you can't see anything. So we what we've been doing is piling it up uh, up in these areas, and there's a dune walkover from this parking lot over onto the beach. So there's we've got about three spots that where we can uh, stockpile it, that sargasm. <coughs> And this is what we have, this is the problem we have if we leave it on the beach. Um, you know, like I believe, I can't remember who it was, but that was mentioning um, uh, about leaving it on. You've got to be very careful as far as driving over it. You know, we've had several vehicles, you know, 
sunk in the, in the beach. Um, they think it's hard packed and it's easier to drive on, um, but it just creates a, a, a like a quicksand underneath, um, and it'll um, it'll take in your vehicle. So these are just a couple of video, the pictures that I wanted to show you all um, of why we don't leave it on the beach and, and let it pile up so so much. Because of the, as far as the north end, where where we do have or do do allow vehicular uh, traffic on the beach, and I think that's. Uh, End of my presentation. So were you saying that there's not vehicular driving on all your beaches? That's correct. The, um, at Isla Blanca, there's, uh, it's all paved, and there, we have a seawall, so we don't, uh, there's no vehicular traffic on the beach, except for our, our maintenance crew and so on. Yes, ma'am. Um, from the pictures, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't. It looks like you've got you know real low kind of the board that came to my mind was wimpy dunes. Um, <laughs> aren't the the property owners don't want help making them higher and for well, better storm protection? We we approached them know, a couple of years ago, and um, they were they were um, reluctant for us to even help them build sand dunes in, in their front area, in the front of dune area, um, because they're afraid that if we did build them, that then they would be protected and then they couldn't do anything with them. So um, we've been trying to educate these people and um, and we've told them, you know, just because of maintenance, we have to push this, this sargasm up. Um, and we've showed them pictures of what it looks like and it doesn't look, you know, that bad. Um, because eventually it'll be covered up with sand, and then of course eventually, you know, build up from there. And it, well, it also looks like your beaches are a lot wider, uh, so I would I would think that there'd be more sand available to blow up over them. Mm -hmm. Well, there, um, I think last about two or three months ago, we've we've lost a lot of beach, and I, I'm assuming it's because of the cold fronts and so on. Um, but we've had to push sand back out because there's some areas we just you, you couldn't. We have we have a beach access five and a six. You can go in through five and then come out through six. Well, um, we had to fill in that low spot because the traffic couldn't get through between five and six. So we had to shut down the beach for a while um, and then build it back up to where vehicles could pass. Yes, sir. So what happens if you say the north end of the island? But that's the end of the road, right? And uh, what happens between there and the Mansfield Cup? Is there any, anything happening? No, we don't maintain. We maintain about a mile north of Beach Access 6, uh, which is still further south of the uh, the end of the pavement. Mm -hmm. There's some pretty major dunes up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is. We're talking about Sarah, are we, unless I'm mistaken, that's all GLO property there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from Mansfield going south before you get to the city property of South Padre Island. That whole point area is in that there's, there's some land that belongs to the Fish and Wildlife that's from the jetty south, um, but it's not a whole lot. You know, and then, of course, it's all private from there on south. Uh, well, I mean, there's that vast expanse that goes to the intercoastal all the way across uh, from the Mansfield Pass south and then Intercoastal to the Gulf, mm -hmm. and and that's that's all fish and wildlife. Fish and wildlife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So federal. Mm -hmm. Federal fish and wildlife. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. A bunch of uh, uh, what do you call them, squatters, I guess you call them, that just kind of have their uh, camps in there. Some people call them hippie camps. I don't know <laughs> that. But is that still going on in there? They just kind of like. We, we haven't seen that that far north, but we've seen it just just north of of uh, or right across from Beach Access Six. Of course, it's on private land, um, but there's a few people that, are, that have squatted on the on their on private property. On the but it's on the west side of the highway. You mean the federal property? No, no, no. It's private. Oh, there's private right. there I'm not sure. Have you found the Singer Treasury? Yeah. 
I'm sorry? Have you found the singer treasure? <laughs> no. Yes, sir. You showed uh, various rings of pulling them, and they sort of got some back out after it was dry. But yes. How long does it take for it to dry and break down? It, it all depends um, on how high, we, how high we pile it. But normally, if it's slow, you know, it'll probably take us about a week and a half, two weeks, where it's manageable and it doesn't smell, and we can push it back out onto the beach. So do you find that beneficial that you're, you're taking care of the initial issue, but then you're not you're replacing the sand back out on the beach? Yes, we do. And, and uh, one thing I didn't mention is that we try to um, handpick some of the trash. We do rake it up. Um, but there is some trash that goes with it that's you know either underneath the, the sargasm or whatever. But um, we do try to get that sand back onto the beach because you know we really need that uh, that sand. Yes, ma'am. Now, I noticed in your first picture where the you hadn't picked up the weed yet that there were lots and lots of shells. Does the raking manage to keep the the shells there? No, that's one of the biggest complaints that we get is that, you know, we go in, our, our employees go in about 5 o'clock in the morning, um, and they rake, and they try to beat the crowd, and one of the biggest complaints we get, um, especially, especially from our winter guests, um, is that we don't give them time to go out and pick, you know, pick up shells, so. <laughs> yes, Pat. afraid you're gonna ask um, I'm not really sure how far um, because what happens is that th there's there's a um, combination of moving that whatever's whatever we stockpile and then whatever's blown up to our seawall we push that back onto the beach um, because our seawall is normally I don't know four or five feet from the normal level of, of the beach and sometimes it gets maybe you know six inches uh, because all the sand blows up to that seawall so we push it back out onto the beach um, well I know that we do well I don't I don't think we have a dune restoration but you talk about beach restoration um, I know we do but okay I'm glad he's not here today. <laughs> He'll be watching on the video. <laughs> well, I, I kind of forewarned him yesterday before he left that I was glad that he wasn't going to be here today. So. Thank you all very much. Thank you.